All right, we are live. This is the Difference Makers podcast. My name is Justin Tamani, your host, and today we have with us Mr. Matt O'Keefe. Matt O'Keefe is the president of Loud and Live Sports, the agent to super athletes, Matt Fraser, Tia Claire Toomey. And under the Loud and Live Sports umbrella, we have events such as Wadapalooza, Granite Games, West Coast Classic. You guys have seen him around. This is Matt O'Keefe. So thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you, Justin. Great to be with you. Uh, looking forward to catching up. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, so give us a little bit about how you got started. Like looking at your bio, we have car salesman, insurance salesman, and then now running loud and live sports. This sports, there's an, a woman dancing in front of my window, a very old woman dancing in front of my window, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I just got very distracted. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I um, yeah, I've had I've had a really diverse career. Um, you know, I I you know I grew up in a uh, an entrepreneurial family. You know, my father owned his own business his whole life. Uh, he was in the car business. So I, you know, I and I evolved into that. You know, when I graduated from university and learned a lot about you know business in general, it was a really great place for me to cut my teeth uh, in the business world and moved into the, you know, insurance world uh, after that. And, you know, on the sales side, which was, you know, interesting, not something I, you know, really loved and enjoyed, you know, so, at, you know, at that, you know, I had a spirit, an entrepreneurial spirit my whole life, you know, I was always, you know, tinkering and trying to figure out thinking big, you know, you know, what, a, what, a, what move I could make to be on my own. And, I took that opportunity when I, you know, early when I started in CrossFit, you know, I loved the sport, really had a infectious experience in a gym and wanted to be more a part of it, saw it evolving and growing. It was, you know, sort of green space and new. And so, you know, started my clothing company, Redline, and uh, had a lot of fun with that for years and um, learned a ton through that process. And you know, really evolved into the marketing side of the business um, through my, some of the relationships I built there, you know, particularly with Matt. Um, yep. I, you know, I started working with him early on in an advisory role, really, to begin with. And then that sort of, you know, evolved over time and into, you know, a more formal management role. And um, I just loved that and kind of had found my spot. Uh, and, you know, the rest is sort of history with that. You know, I've, I've really focused on that. Today, we you know, have a sports marketing agency that owns events, manages athletes. We do a lot of work um, in brands marketing efforts, um, you know, very focused on, you know, telling a training story or, you know, CrossFit story or being involved in the CrossFit space. Have you guys branched outside of CrossFit with any of the athletes that you represent? Um, not athlete, you know, we've, we have at times, um, you know, worked, you know, but again, very training and fitness focused. Uh, we worked with a climber actually for a bit. He's now retired uh, that, you know, an alpinist, uh, he, you know, climbed Everest without oxygen and was a big influencer. Um, you know, we work with some OCR people, but, you know, our roster is specific CrossFit now. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, really, you know, there is an evolution opportunity there because this whole idea of telling a story about training for sport. Uh, is evolving as a big storyline for brands, uh, whether, you know, you're a professional basketball player or a golfer or whatever you do, that training side of what these people do, uh, these athletes do for their sport um, is a really um, big storyline that a lot of brands identify with and can tell a deeper story around than just that sport specific story. And, and so, um, we've done some work in golf, actually, um, yeah. not athlete specific. Um, I have friends who play, uh, but brand specific. And even with, you know, the PGA Tour, you know, we've um, started to, you know, look at and do more work there. But, you know, I think that will evolve over time. We do yeah. get a lot of calls from brands um, that want to tell the training story, maybe not even specific to CrossFit, just identifying that we've done a good job with it or brand around it, or even sports that want to dig deeper in that training side of their business. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I see a lot of brands starting to expand within the space as well. 
that are coming in who maybe not have been in the past and you know somebody like a, a Gillette I know you guys have done some work with Gillette and that's a that's a gigantic company like their names on some NFL stadium yes in Boston right yeah, is that yeah. in my mind Patri- Patriots yeah Patriots, so Gillette stadium. and now they're expanding into the the CrossFit space I know they've worked with Pat and Matt um were you a part of bringing those types of company or that company specifically into the space or did they approach you or how does that kind of relationship would work with some of these companies? Yeah, it's interesting how that sort of comes to fruition specifically, you know, it's evolved too. There's been a lot of more general market recognition of CrossFit specifically as a platform that's worthy of marketing towards, you know, um, for a while, you know, over time, there'd been, you know, it's kind of like Fight Club, you know, the, there's these uh, CrossFitters internal to these businesses, right? So, um, Gillette's a specific example of that, you know, there is a, you know, a guy internal at Gillette Procter & Gamble <clears throat> that had, you know, experienced the CrossFit gym, um, observed the sport and, you know, thought it fit really well with the brand, uh, and it does. And so, you know, th- that was how we got sought out in that relationship. Um, we do do a lot of work with Procter & Gamble um, on the agency side in our general market agency with uh, Walmart, and, you know, some of our relationships there. So there was a lot of symmetry with that particular relationship. But we're seeing an evolution. We're getting sought out quite a bit, you know, um, on brands that have nothing to do or no link, even internal, just recognition um through you know observation that they want to market to the space uh and it's really exciting whether it's tech um you know you've seen whoop evolve as this major player in the tech world but very specifically focused on training and and a heavy hand in the crossfit space you know it's brought competition from aura ring and there is now tech in development consumer um you know measurable products that are coming um that are more um you know, interested in being involved in the space and we get contacted yep. by those guys. Right on. Now with whoop, are you involved with them directly in any way? I know you have a bunch of athletes under the umbrella there, but are you guys, are you involved with whoop in any way? We we're really connected with those guys, nothing, you know, formal on the agency side. Um, but you know, we, um, they're partners of our events. Yep. Uh, they partner with our athletes, um, and they're a home team for me. They're a Boston-based business. Uh, yep. I met those guys five years ago when they were starting, and uh, I got a lot of pride in their success. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we have run alongside Whoop you know, for a long time and are really proud of those guys uh, and really proud to be partnered with them. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I've noticed with you is, you know, I've been at events and I've, I just see you behind the scenes at everything. Like I was behind the scenes with an athlete at the games and turn around and you look like you're working in the back with, with that, you know, and I wasn't expecting it to see you at the games because that is a, a CrossFit event, but what's your relationship there? What were your, what was your role at the games this year? Yeah, this, sorry about the noise, my dog okay. there. Um, the, this year um specifically we did a lot of work with noble um and goad um two brands uh, a one off-site one on-site so we helped uh, noble execute their activations uh athlete check-in and retail and really their whole relationship with the the event um at the crossfit game so that was a really uh exciting fun experience different for me um, and then years past, I've always been really linked to Matt at the games, um, as yeah. his coach, uh, in competition. So, you know, with him retiring, uh, this was, you know, sort of, you know, 2.0 for me with the CrossFit games, which was fun and, and go on activated offsite, you yeah. know, where they, where their marketing agency. So, um, you know, we did a lot of work with that. So it was a big year. We had a lot of people out there. Um, you know, a lot of moving pieces and it was really fun. Um, Noble's, uh, you know, whole execution and activation was phenomenal. I can't tell, you know, those guys did a phenomenal job with that, really leveled that partnership up. And we were, we were, we were honored and excited to be a, a small piece of that. Yeah. I thought they did a fantastic job at the games this year with their presence and kind of their, their spin on, on the, aesthetic changes to the games this year i thought was was great it was awesome yeah they uh, such a cool brand and, and an incredible story uh born really in a gym in, in boston uh, a couple guys yeah. from reebok you know went out on their own and 
the evolution's incredible. It's just a, you know, there's some insane, um, you know, business story, but you know, the, the, the brand is just wild. And the, the identification and recognition in the training space to the brand is global. And, um, it's really inspirational. It's so cool to watch, uh, how far they've come and, you know, where they're going, uh, yeah. you know, starting to branch into other sports and, uh, it's, it's exciting times at Noble. Definitely is. What's with this Boston explosion right now with whoop and noble and you got yourself it's there. It's a lot. Yeah, it is. It's an interesting hub for this. Uh, you know, uh, you know, but, you know, you look back to the origins of, of, you know, this is a sport, you know, Ben Bergeron and CrossFit New England were such a cornerstone piece of the sport at the beginning. Yeah. Um, I think they inspired a lot in, in, uh, you know, on the business side, you know, a lot of things were born out of that gym, um, or in that gym, you know, fuel for fire is a brand that, you know, they're headquartered in the building right next to, and the member, the, the owners are members across New England. I think the first Reebok shoe really came to life from that, you know, the CEO, Matt O'Toole was a member at CrossFit New England and, um, you know, had a, a great experience there and, and thought about getting in the space, you know, a lot of things, uh, come to life through that and boston you know became this unique hub um uh, and there's a lot going on here anyway whoop you know was yeah. completely independent of that you know will's a harvard grad and just uh you know plugged his you know plopped down here and, and started his business here but uh yeah it is it is a fun thing for for fitness it's funny how you just mentioned that but a lot of the brands that are up and coming in the CrossFit space right now are all born from CrossFit. Like it was such a cool thing to see Noble, which was born from CrossFit, take over yep. as as the lead sponsor of the games this year. And I mean, even kind of for yourself, like your your brands were born from CrossFit and you've you've evolved within this space to to become one of the most influential figures in the sport. Um I was talking to uh someone the other day and I said I feel like you're the most, in, and I don't know if you want to accept this or not, but the most influential person in the space that doesn't work for CrossFit. That well, I mean, you know, I don't know your relationship with them entirely, but we're like, we're, hev we're heavily partnered with them. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, yeah. They um, well, thank you for that. I think it's not um, a goal. It's um, you know, you know, uh, maybe a result of some of the process. Uh, we just you know work with a lot of cool people that trust us and you know, that evolves and, um, you know, we focus our energy on our clients and in the space, you know, even though not maybe formally working for CrossFit, I have a huge sense of pride in CrossFit, the CrossFit games, the sport and everybody that's involved with it, including CrossFit, you know, it's, um, I don't know, I've, I've taken, um, you know, uh, a huge responsibility you know, with every deal we do, with every person we work with, with everything we put on um, as a, as an opportunity to help evolve the space and, and level it up, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I take that really seriously. It's um, we're still in a massive growth phase and uh, we've got something special here that had nothing to do with me creating, but, you know, I really take um, a lot of responsibility and, and pride in helping it move along, being a small piece of that. Uh, and it's been really fun, um, and I and I'm really grateful for all the trust we have, um, and we work really hard um, to maintain that and, and help people evolve, brands, athletes, you know, you know, create you know really fun, cool experiences with our events. It's been a, it's been a blast. I, that's awesome. Speaking of events, where do you see some of your events taking this sport in the next few years? Like, because we've seen the shift from the regionals to the kind of sanctioned events and then now kind of back to a regionals ish sanctioned format you know you guys did a lot to level up what the athletes were the the earning potential and the sustainability for the athletes do you feel like some of that has been kind of taken back or you know where do you see loud and live or some of these events taking this for the athletes in the next few years yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. I think we're, you know, we have a lot of, um, positive, um, stuff going on <clears throat> in relationship to the season and outside, right? Like, I think we, yeah. um, you know, a couple of our events are semifinals, the Granite Games and West Coast Classic, and we love it. 
Uh, we love being a part of that. Um, and it's fun that there's now um, some outside involvement in, in the season. Um, I, I think that's a great evolution. I think we look at, you know, uh, you know, we, you know, it goes back to some of that responsibility. I think when we, you know, apply ourselves to things that we're doing, <clears throat> we try to build the best possible experience we can for everybody involved. And I think that's a natural evolution in the athletes being, you know, obviously one of the most important, if not the most important piece. Um, but, you know, when you look at an event like Wadapalooza, take that, that's outside the space. Um, yeah. You know, um, in, uh, sorry, outside the season, um, mm -hmm. it's certainly a part of the CrossFit ecosystem. We, you know, really take a lot of time and energy to build a premium experience for, what, you know, our four pillars, you know, their volunteers, partners, athletes, and spectators. And, you know, I think um, if we focus on <clears throat> what we have control of constantly and, and do a really good job of it, um, you know, we hopefully inspire others to, to, to follow if, if they're behind maybe, um, you know, uh, and work alongside those that, you know, are doing a great job as well. We're collaborative. Uh, we just, you know, we work really hard to bring uh, a next level to everything we do every time we have the opportunity to do it um, and really keep those pillars in mind. Uh, you know, experience is really important. Um, you know, and making sure that, you know, we're helping everything evolve is, is, you know, paramount to everything else. So, you know, and I think you'll see that at Wadapalooza this year. We had a year off, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. But I'm really excited for everybody to experience the next, uh, you know, evolution of what that is. You know, we're bringing a, a free live broadcast for the first time. We've always had this paywall and yeah. um, it's always been a sore spot of our event. And, you know, we're excited about that and integrating with some exciting partners on the broadcast to do some revolutionary stuff with tech on it. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just think that's it. It's just, you know, we try to get better on a daily basis for everybody that trusts us and, and you know, isn't involved with us. Um, and, you know, the same goes for the athletes. You know, I think, you know, when we do these things, you know, our immediate thought is, you know, as we have success, how do we contribute back to their success? Because in the end, you know, people watch them and that's how we evolve and that's how we're able to bring bigger and better things to the consumers, um, you know, to the overall experience. And we want to make sure that they're, you know, compensated properly for that. So, you know, Wadapalooza will have a, a substantial jump in prize money this year. And, and our goal always is to find a way to bring that up, 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 up. Excellent. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you about Wadapalooza because of the year off. I figured you guys would have something coming that's, the welcome back. That's that's the big event that always kicks off the beginning of the year. So I feel like you guys got some something up your sleeves for this year. Yeah, I'm 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 jacked. It's it's time now, right? We're live with uh, registration for our online piece. Uh, so mm -hmm. the Waza OC, the online challenge, um, that's beginning of October. And the response to that's been incredible. So you know, it's obviously some pent up demand on you know on the event people are, are waiting to get back and be a part of it uh yeah and we're gonna make necessary changes um to build off of successes in the past you know build bigger stands so there's more people have seats you know that was a little bit of a you know part of this growth phase we've been in has brought pain right you know we yeah. do a great job and build this awesome experience and you know people show up more people than we think might show up, you know? So there's, you know, some seating issues that we're, we're solving. Um, we're improving the stages, you know, moving some things around so that, you know, the consumers have an overall better experience. The partners have a better experience. The athletes have a better experience on the floor. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. And the broadcast particularly, you know, that piece is incredibly exciting. We've yeah. taken control of that. We're producing it ourselves with some, some you know, um, you know, vendors that are really good at this, that do a lot of work in the space. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we've got an exciting partner we'll announce soon on that side of the business um, that will integrate, you know, incredibly with the broadcast and do some exciting things. So um, you'll um, definitely come out of that weekend and say, wow, like that, that's a, a, a big step up uh, for Wadapalooza in the space. So I'm excited about it. Awesome. That's exciting. And now some of that stuff that you're applying there, are you going to bring it to the other events, West Coast, Granite? Because I know West Coast ended up being a little scaled down for what you had anticipated originally, right? 
Yeah, we're looking to get back to, you know, our ethos, which is inclusivity, right? Like, I think, um, you know, we're really uh, always interested and excited to be a professional sport platform. So have that stage be um, for uh, a prize, right? You know, mm-hmm. you, know, for, you know, whether it's the allure of being the Wadapalooza champion and earning a big check, which isn't necessarily contributing to the, the process of the games. But now, you know, the, those events being semifinals that get you to the final stage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, we want to make sure that those events um, are more inclusive. We, you know, we find, um, you know, our, you know, who we are as a business is we want people to, you know, experience it at, at great depth. So we'll bring multi divisions to those events, even though they'll, you know, be semifinals. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll go more of that Wadapalooza feel, you know, what Granite Games has always traditionally been to, you know, where it's mm-hmm. been, you know, 30 or 40 divisions, 2000 athletes, we're going to get back to that. You know, and on the, you know, on the broadcast side, when you look at a semifinal, you know, that stuff is done through CrossFit and they do a great job of it. Um, yep. We're excited to be a part of it. And I know they're always evolving, but they did a great job with that last year. So um, that stuff, um, you know, will be you know, always bigger and better uh, every time, you know, they, they put some of that stuff out. Definitely. Now, for some of these events that are coming out right now, and I know you're not necessarily involved with these, but for Rogue and uh, Dubai, they look like they're going to kind of strictly an invitational basis. Do you think that's something that, I mean, you can't do it for all your events, but, and I know in the past competitors have been invited, but do you think that that's something that's sustainable for the athletes? Or do you think there needs to be a chance for some of these young and up and comers to qualify for those events? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I think they're really cool events and um, I think they speak perfectly to what they want them to be. Um, They're, you know, big showcase uh, premium, you know, elite platforms, you know, that are, uh, you know, and, you know, we're at Wadapalooza different than that, which is fine. Right. And I think there are other options around the schedule that contribute to, you know, uh, athletes being able to come up in the space. you know, Madrid's a perfect example. We're running that event. Um, our partner is in, in October in Spain. You know, we'd love that event to become involved and become more significant in the space. And, you know, this year is the first step in that. But there'll be, you know, 1,500 athletes competing at that event. And there's some prize money involved. And that's, you know, those are perfect opportunities for a young uh, up and comer to go and get some experience because there'll be some elite athletes there. You know, I think uh, Adrian Munweiler is competing, Zach George. So there's some good competitors in the space competing. So, yeah, I think I love Rogue's event. I I love Dubai. I've been to Dubai probably more than anyone, including athletes. Like I've gone every year. Um, Yeah. You know, Rogue's a special event and, you know, what they do for the athletes in the space is, you know, unparalleled you know and look at the prize money this year so yeah i mean you know you know i think the pundits could argue on you know participation um but you know i i live the this their side of it and i love what they do honestly you know yeah would it be cool that a up-and-comer you know some cinderella story could qualify and podium at that event but it's not what those events are you know yeah. um and so I don't think they're uh, restricting uh, the pr- the progress of the sport at all. Um, I think they're only contributing to more people wanting to be involved and earn their spot to to, to be at those events. It's it becomes uh, incredibly aspirational and inspirational at the same time. It's inspiring the next generation to work really hard to be able to get their opportunity to be there, albeit hard to get invited. Um, I think, you know, when, when kids come in this space, they think of wanting to go to the CrossFit games and having success, but they also want to be on those floors and everything that, um, you know, is involved in getting on those floors is clear to them. Um, and there's a process and I think that it, 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 at a minimum, you know, uh, provides an incredible amount of inspiration for them. Definitely does. Hey guys, Justin checking in here. Don't forget, like and subscribe down below for more content coming soon from Wadproof and the Difference Makers. I know when I broke into the sport or when I first saw the sport, part of my inspiration was to to be on that level and to go to the regionals and and those types of competitions. And it was so cool to to be able to aspire to that. But with the uh, kind of the barrier for entry getting so much higher with how competitive the the sport is, um, 
would you what kind of advice would you give to these some some of these younger athletes that are trying to get there i know you're you know yeah you've operated yeah. as a coach and behind the scenes so yeah it's you know it's interesting you know this topic comes up a lot because i think um you know this sort of inclusive topic and then you know what is what does it take the, the beautiful part of all this is our sports evolving and becoming more um, established so it's harder to become significant you know when i started 10 years ago you know i the same looked at it as an opportunity to compete i was like you know geez i can go to regionals you know this yeah. is great you know i can compete at a high level in something and it was just early right you know there were, you know now this sport is something that teenagers yeah. look at and say i want to train for it like it's their goal life goal in sport uh which is the evolution and the difference now um it's harder and harder and just like going to the olympics or becoming an nba player or any of that uh, there's a huge process involved that involves hard work dedication a lot of long hard work i should say on the front yeah. end of that um you know some luck and some talent you know and it's just like this you know huge um you know there's no you know the playbook's evolving but um you can't just show up you used to be able to early on show up a little bit you know you could be in a college yeah. football player been very fit and strong and kind of learn the stuff a little bit and then been been a player and it. it's not like that anymore you know you see justin medeiros is a perfect example you know he just won the crossfit games his story is being told more and more now but he'd been around the space for six years seven years you know, yeah. he started this as a young teen that looked at this and said, I want to be good at it and I want to win the CrossFit Games. Um, you know, Matt Fraser had accomplished a lot in other sports um, and evolved into this and, you know, quickly, you know, set his sights on that great goal, um, but had worked a lot in other things that then contributed to this. You know, you're seeing a lot of CrossFit specific focus from, from athletes moving forward, which makes it harder and harder in, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, we get a lot of reach out from athletes in general and, and some young that are, you know, aspiring to be, you know, the best in the world or on that stage. And there's a, you know, there's a long process to that now. And it's, um, I love that though, too, because it's, um, you know, it's creating some consistency and continuity. It's, you know, there's no flukes, um, you know, and there definitely was no ever a fluke in, in somebody podiuming and winning and getting to the games, but like in the grand scheme of things, um, anyone gaining any notoriety or any, you know, accomplishment in this space now is a long, long road. Definitely a long road now. You know, my advice on that is you ask is, you know, work hard, you know, find, you know, uh, good people to help you, you know, focus on the right things. Um, you know, you know, have a program, follow a program, you know, have focus on what you need to work on, work on weaknesses, uh, compete, you know. And, and learn and don't make the same mistakes over and over again. And, um, and you need a lot of luck. You know, you need a lot of luck along the way. Yeah. How do you guys select what athletes that you work with, with uh, loud and live? Yeah, I think, I think, um, you know, that is uh, evolving too, right? Because I think a lot of the people we work with now we have for so long and we're sort of the pillars of the start of the sport. Um, yeah. You know, and you know, there's no real cookie cutter approach. I think, you know, we are identify talent or, you know, a talent will identify us as somebody they want to work with. So it's, you know, it's different in every situation. Mm -hmm. And we do get a lot of reach out. I mean, we're very in tune with the sport. We have our finger on the pulse. Yeah. Um, athletes and, you know, what's really fun about this space. And I tell this story a lot. It's like, you know, the Pat Matt thing, you know, I am, um, came to be uh, Pat's agent because Matt asked, me to talk to them, you know, so yeah. there's a lot of that that goes on, which is cool. I think the athletes have the sense of responsibility within the athlete community to help steward that group forward. You know, every time out of the games comes, you know, Pat, Brent, Matt, Katrin, Tia, these gr girls and guys will say, hey, listen, you know, this girl's super cool. This guy's super cool. I think they're going to be really good. You know, I told them about you. Um, so, you know, that's more common than you know uh, us you know reaching out often to people um you know i think it's um it's one of those things that you know we have a lot going on and a lot of work yeah. and our clients are super busy um so you know we talk to people and i think the process there you know we'll talk to anyone you know that is interested in having somebody help them 
and don't profess to be a fit for everyone. Um, and you know, if we aren't, we help them find somebody that is the right fit. You know, we, we try to align with their goals, their hopes, their dreams. Um, and you know, them as people, I think, you know, we want to work with really good people. Um, uh, and I think everybody we work with is a very good person, uh, first. Okay. So, um, that's, you know, that's a big part of our process, but you know, there's really no cookie cutter approach on that. Um, it's been, okay. It's fun. We have um, awesome salespeople in the market. Our athletes, they think very highly of our work with yeah. them and they, 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 they tell people they should work with us. That's awesome. Now you mentioned Matt, Pat, Brent, Tia, you, you guys represent the men's and women's podium this year at the games, all six athletes, if I'm not mistaken. We did. Yes. That's a pretty cool thing. How do you guys balance representing those athletes and the, the, competitorship of of them competing against each other and all trying to achieve the same goal it's a great question that i get asked often and um it's it's um it's always worked it's uh it is complex right but we have they have a, a, an incredible amount of respect for each other and i think we do a really good job communicating with them um because you know it requires an immense amount of communication to make sure that you know they're feeling good about no lines getting crossed um mm -hmm. because you know it, it is it is a complex scenario i think you know we um you know obviously you know work with each of those people very independently and focus you know very independently on their goals and, and you know you know their track and kind of how they want things to work things that they're interested in and things and you know people that reach out to them are very focused on them we don't cross lines there but uh we've just built a lot of trust because you know, we do the right thing always you know not often not every once in a while like every time um yeah. you know that's what's required and you know we over communicate you know there there can be you know what the real risk and pain could be is you know someone getting a deal that someone else thought that they should get or they were attracted to um, you know, we've been able to navigate that perfectly because we communicate, you know, and, um, you know, and there's enough to go around is the other answer to that. Um, and there's, um, you know, there's so much opportunity in this space and, and that group's so sought after, uh, to tell brand stories. Um, so, you know, it's, um, more of a situation at this point with the group that we work with is just, you know, uh, handling all the volume and getting it dispersed properly. Um, there's just so much great, you know, there's so many great things going on, you know, within that group. Um, so yeah, it is complex, you know, on the outside, mm -hmm. it's simple on the inside because they're great people. We communicate, uh, we have a really good relationship. They're all very dear friends. Um, yeah. and over time they've experienced that, you know, that they're cared for, like they're the only person and that's the goal. That's awesome. That's great to hear. With uh, some of these brands that you deal with, do you guys ever have kind of like a package deal, like approach or that where they say, hey, we need like five athletes and then it's just trying to align with which athletes or is it usually just kind of like a one to one situation? Yeah, it depends. So, you know, we do work for brands yeah. right? and, and some of our work um, has been keyed around, you know, you brought up Gillette earlier, influencer campaigns, athlete mm -hmm. campaigns where we'll um you know help them campaign around six athletes and then we'll go seek those six athletes or, or eight athletes whatever it is yeah um but when it's you know when it comes to you know xyz brand looking to sponsor an athlete we we don't um you know leverage this whole like you know stay within the loud live ecosystem package scenario um we individualize that you know every athlete has their own distinct value yeah. um and you know what they bring to the table and we focus on each individual one at a time you know they you know there might be a brand that comes in and says you know hey we're looking to sign two females and two males um you know the immediate response to that is you know who are our two females and two males that are the best fit and then individually talking about each of them you know yeah. uh not like you know hey you know give us x hundreds of thousands of dollars and we'll just we'll figure out how we cut it up internally that's not how it works we you know, work individually with each athlete. Each athlete delivers differently, uh, likes to go about their social media differently. Um, so everything is very individualized. Yeah. Nice. And with that being said, you know, you've, you've made some big deals within the sport. What are some of the, the 
your favorites that you've been a part of working on over the years? Like, is there anything that's like kind of hit you in the in the feels a little bit because you you got that one done, or is a company that you've always wanted to work with? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, um, being you know the kid fulfilling his dream of being you know involved on the business side of sports, you know, you always pinch yourself being you know, you know, when you have time to actually think about things that you're involved in and accomplishing. You know, with big, you know, brands that you grew up with as a kid, you know, the, you know, the Nikes and the Reeboks of the world, like, you know, I did Matt's deal uh, with Nike mm -hmm. um, when that was, you know, essentially, you know, their first big deal in the space. I'm really proud of that. Um, and they've had a ton of success in the space, not because of me, but, you know, yeah. Matt being a piece of their success and, and um, you know, being able to steward and help with that deal has been, you know, a huge sense of pride. And. Um, that's super cool, but there's so many of those stories for me. Um, Noble sticks out like a, you know, massively in that scenario. It's just, you know, I knew those guys, you know, from, you know, working out at, in a noontime class at CFE, &E, yeah. um, to watch them, you know, say, we're doing this to, you know, coming out with product two years later, signing the first athletes with them. Uh, helping them along the way there and then, you know, being very athlete focused with them for years and now having a bigger relationship with them on the marketing side. Um, you know, that, that whole story is wild, you know, and it's so yeah. cool. And to, to watch brands like Rogue and them whoop, um, you know, RX bar, all these brands realize billion dollar valuations for in CrossFit gyms. Um, and, you know, being able to be a part of that, it's really cool, you know? And, and so, um, I'm proud of every deal, um, and that's cliche, but I'm proud of every deal. Um, and I'm most proud of these relationships that, you know, withstand multiple contracts too, because, you know, then, then we've done it right. Like the, the brand's realizing return, the athlete yeah. loves the brand and they're doing a good job for them. Um, and they're contributing, we're contributing to their future. You know, these kids are making a living and, um, setting up their life forever off of um, their hard work and we're helping steward that. So it's, um, yeah, it's every one of them is awesome. You know, there's new brands coming in all the time, you know, uh, monsters involved now. Um, so many endemic brands, the success of all those endemic brands are incredible. You know, all these brands born in the space and now have evolved to these multi hundred million dollar businesses and billions yeah. on top of that. Um, but, you know, you're seeing all this, you know, non-endemic re recognition, Monster being one of them, mm -hmm. you know, an iconic sports brand now really coming in with force in the space. Um, it's so cool to be a part of. Definitely. It's been cool to watch from the outside and seeing it grow. And, you know, like I don't consider myself like an, an OG in the space or anything like that. Like I've been in the space for 10 years and I still look back at, you know, those guys that I watched growing up. But I see this as being kind of the new wave of, of CrossFit, you know, the, the kind of the OG era. And then we saw the Reebok era that, that started to build with faces like Kalipa and Froning becoming, you know, the face of the sport to now Matt and now Noble becoming the face of the, or the, the lead sponsor in the sport. It's, it's really cool to see that evolution. And now it seems like, more athletes can create a sustainable lifestyle from this sport. True. Yeah. Yeah. There is, you know, the professionalization of the sport evolves and it's, it's, um, it's more and more real. And you know why, you know why, like the end, in the end it, it's, um, and you know, you look at the response from fans and consumers and athletes alike, um, you know, wanting, um, that to realize that and that to be a real thing and you know athletes need to get paid as a fan response and you know um, mm -hmm. so they can train full-time you know and athletes wanting to get paid so they can train full-time well the the way that's happened is because it all works from a business perspective you know their um, endorsement of products you know these <clears throat> sponsorship of events um, all this stuff has created an environment where businesses are having success so yeah. without that you know, nobody, there's no handouts, you know, no. um, in the end, passion ends at a certain point, you know, with these things. Um, and we're far past that at this point, there's tons of passion, but the business side prevails because economics, you know, are important. So, uh, that stuff works, you know, and, uh, 
these kids endorsement um, works for brands uh, and it's, you know, treading deeper and deeper and deeper at this point, which is great because that allows more and more athletes um, to be able to be, you know, professional, you know, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's important for people to realize too. Like, I think, you know, one of the things I know on my side is athletes get paid deeper in this sport than maybe most sports in the world. And I don't think people realize that. Yeah. They're not realizing, you know, a Nike contract worth $20 million for basketball shoes or, you know, um, you know, there, but there are big deals floating and, there are deeper deals floating. You know, I think if you look at the NBA, there's probably 10 guys that have shoe deals, you know, at a high level, Uh, there's probably 50 that do in our space, you know? So, you know, you look at football, you know, there's probably five to 10 guys that have cleat deals, you know, Um, there aren't, there are way more here, Um, you know, and that goes on and on and on. So I think it's, um, you know, those are very top heavy sports, you know, outside endorsement off the field, you know, and football is very, very, very low. You know, you got Tom Brady, you know, and a few others that are Patrick Mahomes. There's not a ton of guys getting endorsement deals off the field um, at a great level. We have a ton of that. So yeah. um, I'm proud of that. And, you know, it's providing a real opportunity for kids to train on a full time basis and, and brands invest in that. They love the story. They want to be a part of some of that early action. Uh, and helping support people uh, to be a little more focused uh, and grow in the sport. Just kind of circling back, you said, you know, all these these athletes and it's running deep with how many have deals and off the field endorsements or, you know, for, for the CrossFit space. Why do you think that that's so high in the CrossFit space relative to these other professional sports? Is it just more brand identity? Like what what seems to be the thing that connects these athletes to these brands? It's more relatable, it, you know, it, it, it's analogous to golf. I think golf realizes a lot of success this way through endorsement. It, it's a user uh, fan base. So, you know, golf fans, golf, um, CrossFit fans, CrossFit. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a degree of um, more connectivity really in the grand scheme of things. So it's, um, you know, that creates a really interesting environment for engagement, you know, I think, um, because I go to the gym on a daily basis and work out and mm-hmm. do muscle ups and clean and jerks, you know, I watch a lot of that stuff, you know, more on, you know, on digital, you know, whether it's, yeah. you know, streaming or social because, you know, people want to get better at it and like it and, you know, they can relate to it more. Um, you know, football's different. I mean, God, those platforms have more viewership than anybody in the world. Yeah. But I think it trickles less down to the consumer. You know, the guy in the stands at an NFL game is less apt to put a whoop on his wrist than, you know, a, a person that watches CrossFit. And I think brands like that are not only identifying with that and seeing that, they're realizing it when they contribute, you know, and they get involved and they sponsor an athlete or an event. The consumer side of our business is wild. Yeah. The engagement's super high. And that's why it's just, uh, it's, it's just way more relatable to people that, that, that love it. When brands come to work with you, do you have to prove that to them or are they coming to work with you already kind of knowing that fact? It's been an evolution. I think there's a lot more recognition now, uh, that, yeah. that, um, takes, uh, less time to, to prove, um, than it had, but there's been a process involved in that. You know, I think, um, I knew that early on and, and identified with that early on and myself and others have, have sung the praises uh, and, and opportunity there for years. Now there's a lot of brands, you know, like go back to monster seeing that from the outside where they're like, you know, let's get in on this. And this is why we've had this experience in golf or UFC. Yeah. The same type of community. We now have the playbook, let's go do it. Um, there there's, um, there's less, you know, you know, having to pitch and prove, uh, and more, um, you know, how do we formulate, you know, the right mix and, and you know, and, and execute for these brands now. Right on. Well, you seem like you're very busy all the time. You're always on the go. What do you do for fun to unwind, to kind of step away? Or you? Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I am busy. Uh, it, but I love what I do. So, uh, it makes it, you know, you know not painful, um, uh, to be that busy. Uh, you know, I work every day to some extent because I love it. And just, you know, it's funny. We're at this wedding at Pat's wedding and 
sitting at a table with uh, Emily and Kyle Rolf and uh, Michelle Latandra and, and Fred, her partner, and, and Paul Tremblay and his wife, Sarah, and my wife. And, you know, I think uh, Kyle Rolf at one point said, I challenge you guys for an hour to not talk about CrossFit. And we we're all <laughs> like, no chance. Like, we don't have an interest yeah. in it, you know? <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, I think... Um, you know, I, I do have a ton of interest in other things. My family, um, you know, my kids are super busy and my time gets, you know, incredibly divided, but, you know, I, I, I work hard at being present and I coach some teams uh, with my kids and <laughs> that's, you know, next, to, you know, on, you know, in the level of importance and probably most important, you know, um, but that has to work. So I work quite a bit, but the, I like to golf. Uh, I golf yeah. quite a bit. Uh, I've, I've been reinvigorated with my love for golf in the pandemic. It was, you know, we were all home. It was really one of the few outdoor activities that was available. Um, so, you know, and I would, can do it with my family. My son plays, my, my wife occasionally plays. So I ski in the winter. So, yeah, I, I like to do the active things, you know, be outside, and, you know, with my family, as you can hear. So, uh, yeah, I have some other interests. Good. Good. Keep you sane, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Uh, before we go, where can everybody find you? Where can everybody, you know, get involved with uh, Loud and Live and some of the things you guys have coming up? Yeah, um, you know, we have many handles on social with our events. Each individual event has a handle: West Coast Classic, you know, Granite Games, Wadapalooza, um, and Loud and Live. You know, so we tell stories around all of those and kind of give you updates on where we're at and what we're doing. Um, so those are great places to stay updated on us and, you know, what athletes are doing through, you know, our live live social, and, um, come to an event, you know, you know, I, I, I tell people that all the time, but if you haven't been to Wadapalooza particularly, uh, you know, put that on the bucket list. It's such a great experience. I was a huge fan before I ever became involved in that event because it is the best event in the world. So, um, just, you know, really, you know, do, you know, you know, get involved, show up for some of that stuff, but yeah, you can check us out on social. Um, I'm on there too. And I'm not very present on social. Unfortunately, I always get kicked to be more present, but, um, you know, I'll let the athletes and our, 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 our event platforms tell the story. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time guys. This yeah. has been the difference makers and, uh, we'll hear from you soon. Take care. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hit that like button and subscribe down below for more content coming soon from Wadproof.